Welcome to Mystically Blissful Lecture Theories. So we're trying something new here. And it's basically about unlocking the keys to graceful thriving. In all levels of our life, it is important that we actually step away from suffering, surviving, struggling. And it's beautiful when we can look at it from a space of gracefulness. When we stop struggling and fighting and hoping and trying and just allow the flow to bring us to a place of thriving. So in this series you will see my face every month and we will talk about different themes and topics that hopefully unlock graceful thriving for you. The first thing and foremost important thing is obviously always the intent. Why would you want to be gracefully thriving? Why would you want to? Or maybe why would you not want to? What is the outcomes, what is the expectations you're attaching to it? The best outcomes and expectations are none. When we are fully detached and just say, well, I'm here. I'm doing this because I am connected to my divine self, to my divine purpose. I am here to do that for all there is, to be in a sacred relationship with everything there is. And that brings us to one of the key elements of a pure intent and the intent of the heart. So our mind is the one that analyzes and wants to have everything and our heart is the one that actually knows what our heart desires. It doesn't mean that we don't have material things and it doesn't mean that we can be wealthy but it comes from a different space, not of ownership, not of control but of simply allowing whatever the universe has in stock for us. So the sacred reciprocal relationship with everything there is was introduced to me when I did some shamanic, shamanic studies and in Quechua the language of the Incas in Peru, Ecuador and Bolivia this is called Aini and it's a really beautiful word the other beautiful word that I would like to share with you as it is in some ways an activation already is Sonko and Sonko is the heart Wilka Sonko is the sacred heart. So an intent from the sacred heart that is in Aini, in sacred relationship with everything there is, is bound to wear fruits. So over this series, we're starting this now, this is October 11th, 2013. We will cover a number of topics and then we'll see where it leads us. Hopefully you will experience more presentness, you will see your choices clearer, you will enjoy consciousness, you will get hopefully more clarity, you will understand how to use language and thoughts and emotions and all that you are to co-create that graceful thriving. So I guess that's enough for now. Let's get into our little theme for this month. What came to me was so many people talk about self-esteem and how important it is that we have that sense of worthiness for self, that we know who we are, what we can do, that we have that self-love, also self-forgiveness, being at peace with self, understanding self, being grateful for self. And as you can see already, all these concepts require actually practice. So self-esteem is not something that just comes along and you say, okay, I'm doing self-esteem now. It actually requires us on a daily basis, not only on a daily basis, every moment to be conscious and to be in that notion and in that presentness of our self-worth. Self-esteem on its own, I feel, is actually not sufficient. So what if you feel worthy, but if you don't trust yourself that you can succeed? 
This is not about competing with others. This is not about becoming the richest man or woman in the world or the most famous, no. It is about trusting that the gifts that we have, we can use in a way that they are meaningful to others and to self. So this is what we call self-efficacy. I came across this a couple of years ago when I was teaching students. And it's quite interesting. Study skills is a very interesting topic. How do, how do students really get good marks? There's a lot of skills that I enjoy teaching and uh, helping my students to understand that every assignment, every test, every exam can actually be cracked when we understand the study skills behind it. And in a way, what I was doing with that was actually enabling them to see that it's possible to succeed. We often look at life and say, oh my God, I can't do this. Oh my God, nobody has ever done this. This is impossible. And the thing with self-efficacy is actually seeing that it is possible, either by experience of others or by experience of self. So for me, the self-worth and the self-efficacy, that trust in knowing that we can succeed. So I'm not just having this dream and it never come true, but I actually have this ability to dream this dream into being and live my dream courageously. That is self-efficacy. Of course, if I don't love myself, if I don't value myself, if I don't practice also compassion with myself. Yes, in some ways everything is always perfect, but of course there are moments when I could show up much better, where I could be much more myself. So really, that balance is a very beautiful balance in loving self, in feeling that worthiness for self and in trusting that we can succeed with our dreams to be lived and to be dreamt into being. And then I came across a third kind of concept that I felt fits just beautifully into our self-esteem, self-efficacy is the locus of control. Locus of control is a very interesting one. Some of it is culturally based. So I came across locus of control through intercultural communication that I used to teach and also in organizational behavior, of course. Locus of control is all about to what extent do I believe that I am the master of my world, my destiny, my life? To what extent do I believe that life, the world, the government, the employer is controlling my life. Now that's another very important concept to consider. So what if I feel worthy and what if I know that I can succeed but actually I don't trust that it's up to me. It is in my power and my control to make things happen. So you can see why I brought these three things together. If you want to read up a little bit, there's a lot of different people on self-esteem, so go and enjoy what you can find. On self-efficacy, I feel Bandura has done a wonderful job, if you want to read more about it. And the locus of control is mainly the work of Rotter. Now, what are we really doing with this? What are we really learning? What are we really unlearning? How much control do we really have? What is really power? Is it the power we have over others? Is it the power we have over situations? Or is it really the power that we have within ourselves? The power to create, the power to see, the power to trust self, the power to believe in succeeding. Power for me has always been a very important topic, an important energy to deal with. Because power is very important. We can use power 
in a wonderful way, again, from an intent, sacral, reciprocal relationship with everything there is. And we can use power over, meaning we're overpowering others, we're controlling others, and we're creating really an imbalance in the universe. So that's why that locus of control is really another key element of our topic today. So what does that really mean in real life? Mystically blissful experiences are working a lot around whole life magic, meaning we're looking at whole life, not just at your work or your love life or your family or your hobbies or your destiny. We're really looking at life as a whole because really there's no separation. Your whole life is somehow related to each other. And you may notice when you are not yourself at work when you are not authentic in your life. Your life gets out of balance. So this is where the whole life comes in. So how does that work in your whole life? Well, if you can start loving, accepting and feeling worthy in all aspects of your life, then you will find a big difference in your life. When on top of that, you can trust yourself to achieve and to be successful in what is meaningful to you. Then your life feels whole. When you no longer feel the victim, the victim to the environment, to the government, to anything, to anybody that has done you bad, past spouses, parents, employers, then actually you have a level of freedom and that freedom enables you to truly be yourself and when you're truly yourself you are gracefully thriving so this is how it works in your whole life magic the other thing that we're looking at a lot with mystically blissful experiences is relational magic so in a relationship now you can bring this together how do you create space for your partner to be worthy. How do you allow your partner to grow and yourself in that space? Very important. What do you do to succeed, to trust that you can succeed on your own and with your partner? What's the space that you're creating? What are the practices? What is the language that you're using? And lastly, who is in control of your life? Your life together. Your life as a couple. So relational magic really is looking at the significant relationship or the relationship with the significant others, but also with yourself again. The relationship with your family, with your friends, and basically with everything there is. With spirit, with God, whatever you want to call it. The last part of graceful thriving applies for organizations. So this is for leaders really. For those of you who have a bigger picture of an organization and how it can work. Now imagine you have a team that feels worthy. A team that feels good about self. A team that works together and respects others in that same way, so supporting each other also to have that self-esteem. Who have regular practices of being worthy, getting encouraged. Because the nice thing about self-esteem, self-efficacy and locus of control is also that our well-being is increasing. Well-being on all levels, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So imagine you have a team like that then the other outcome that comes from this is actually motivation. So often we wonder how can we, how can we make our employees motivated? Well, you actually can because that is something that they decide to do on their own. Feeling worthy, feeling loved by self and by others is helping. Knowing they can succeed individually and as a team 
is helping your organization. Knowing that they too have a huge power in the organization, even though they might not be the executive and the CEO. And if they are, that's important too. So when we know that the economy, the general situation, circumstances are not necessarily responsible for our situation, but that we can co-create a challenge and a difference, then you have a team who will succeed, who is motivated, and who knows where they are going. So you can see those three concepts apply beautifully in the three most important parts for us, and maybe the three most important parts for most of us. Our whole life, our relationships, and work, and the organization maybe that we're working for. But also for those who are obviously entrepreneurs and, live and making their living on their own. The more you trust yourself, the more you feel good about yourself, the more you trust that you can succeed, the more you know that you're not a victim to economy and other people, you know that you can make it. So I guess for today, we have a little idea of how these three concepts can work for you in all different aspects. If you would like to know more, if you are looking for some exercises to understand where you are at, how you can improve those different areas, how it applies to you personally, let me know. You can find us on the website www.mysticalbliss.com. You can find me on Facebook, Alpomero Yenga, or you can find me on patrick.mysticalbliss at gmail.com. So looking forward to hearing from you. Take care.